Hey, <clears throat> YouTube. I thought I'd make a video showing all my uh, precision bases, and I'm going to try and make it quick. So, I've got a few squires, all made in Japan. <clears throat> this is my first squire I got. It is uh, an SQ series. Um, I've chucked a badass bridge on it. It's got uh, Labella low tension flats. Um, I used to have a um, a 78 Fender Precision and when I studied music uh, a guy in my uh, classroom music room had a Squire Jazz it was probably a JV I don't remember this was in the late 90s and uh, it felt so good it was just a beautiful instrument and I actually offered to swap my 78p for his squire and uh, he said no which is cool i couldn't believe it but uh he liked his bass and didn't want to swap so <clears throat> this is the first squire japan bass i ever got um it started out black uh re-sprayed it and did a terrible job the neck is beautiful it has uh it has, you're not going to see it, are you? Probably not. It's got flame maple on it. I put a uh, drop tuner on it. And this is my, it's got EMGs, but I'm going to put geezers, pickups back in it. This is what I'm going to call my Pino P bass. Low tension flats, easy to get around on, older body, nice and light. And what's the next one I got? This one. SQ serial number. I think it's basically an SQ series P, um, but they put uh, reverse tuners, which I believe come from the factory, and uh, the uh, strap button. But it's got the skunk stripe, so I guess it's not a JV neck. Um, I bought this off a mate of mine. I paid too much for it because he he is uh, Italian and wouldn't budge. Not that, uh, well, you know, some Italians are very negotiable. Some of them really uh, are firm on the price. Anyway, uh, when I got it, the neck was bowed to H. And uh, I did everything I could to straighten it. Uh, <clears throat> and I got it straight. However, I have to use the lowest tension strings you could ever imagine. So there's a tape wounds. I've used TI flats uh, because the neck just wants to bow up. So to keep it straight, low tension strings, that's fine. It's nice to have one P bass with a low tension with uh, tape wounds. Um, when I bought it and I saw the neck and the action was this high, should have been red flag, but it was my mate. It still is my mate and uh, uh, just like, I wanted it. I think it was at the start of COVID and uh, I just wanted a new toy to play with basically. Uh, what do I get next? Next I got this 70s P bass which I've put an original 80s DiMaggio and a Spitfire pickguard. It looks pretty good in my opinion. Uh, plus I changed the wiring harness to solid shaft pots because I like a nice, I like my knobs to just move cleanly and not be wobbly like with split sharp pots. So that was just a little thing. <coughs> uh, Ultralight tuners, sand the neck back. So I bought this base. Um, I had a lot of, I had a big tax refund after COVID and I went to a guy's house and I went to buy his SWR base 350 and um he had this lying place stunk like cigarettes this base still smells like cigarettes two years later which is fine because it's it's tobacco -y color and whatever um and this was sitting in the in the corner of his stinky smoky house and i said uh I'll, I'll buy this off you and i did the whole you know I'm not leaving without this base, or how much you want, I'll pay whatever. So uh, I've got a pretty good deal, I reckon. It's got a 
Good. I can chuck an EMG in there or active pickups if I want, but uh, I keep it stock. It's about four and a half kilograms. It's like uh, 10 high tens, but that's okay because I use a mega wide strap and it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, why? So I had that, and then I got this one, which is another, which is a real stock JV 1983. Everything stock. Uh, my friend had this <clears throat> for a long time and I went to his house one day and I get to play it, got to play all his basses and when I played this I was like, oh shit, that's a fucking, pardon me, nice neck. Uh, anyway, so eventually I ended up acquiring a Gibson Thunderbird. He wanted it. Uh, I was like, oh, I don't really need another P bass. We've got three or four. But anyway, I ended up trading and some cash and I ended up with this. And it's a good bass. Okay, I have rounds on this. So this is my round way on P bass for any sort of brighter, bitey kind of <clears throat> P bass singers I need. The last bass I've got is the May Mexico uh, Classic Series Lacquer. And this is a nice bass. This has, uh, this has Labella 104 to whatever, 45. Not super high tension. Um, one thing that annoys me is the G. The G saddle always wants to push out, push down. It's so annoying. It doesn't affect it very that much. And I chucked a uh, Seymour Duncan uh, SDP B1, something like that, the vintage one, and this is a killer bass, I love this thing, I did a gig with it a couple of days ago, I mean not a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, a blues gig, and just felt freaking awesome, so this is a nice little axe, and that's it, that is my five precision bases, alright, take it easy got any questions about Japanese squires I might be able to answer it um, the good bases and uh, yeah so is the Mexican so is the USA bye bye